At the end of this video is an ad from Curology. In order to satisfy the conceit of this video's title, I first have to explain why cast iron gets so much love. These pans are very inexpensive. They hold on to heat like nothing else, which is really important during a sear or a braise. They last forever. You could buy one today and have your grandkids cook with it if they haven't been irradiated to death by 7G towers by then. The pans are manufactured free of chemicals like those found in Teflon. They are all one oven safe piece that can eventually become pretty much nonstick if properly cared for after years of use. However, however, much like salvaged denim and Carhartt jackets, sweaty tryhards love to glom onto a product that's known for being bulletproof and treat babying it like a personality trait. Take your APCs out of the freezer dingus. Yes, it is very cool to own a tool that has been hardened and refined by a century of routine, but it is 0% cool to have a seething conniption when someone trying to do you a favor hits your lodge with a drop of Dawn. So here is the minimum level of effort required and you can decide how much more to obsess. First, buy some cast iron. This, like Pyrex, is a case of they don't make them like they used to, but a modern pan will still be just fine. You can pay whatever you want according to your own priorities, but for my money, I'd much sooner buy a $300 collectible Griswold from the 30s over a modern pan with eight spout technology and a hard to clean handle. Step two is to season it. Even if the product is labeled pre-season, you should give it at least one coat of seasoning at home by coating it in fat, getting it hot and then letting it cool down. Use a fat with a neutral flavor and a high smoke point. You wouldn't want to fumigate your house with an hour's worth of smoldering butter. Seasoning pans is where most of the mythology and misconception lies, but all you need to know is that heating a pan gets it ready to accept a thin layer of oil and polymerize it, meaning that the fat converts from a wet liquid to a permanently hardened layer, molecularly bonded to the iron. The most popular way to season cast iron, or rather the most popular way to tell other people how to season the cast iron, is to wipe a super thin layer of oil all over the whole thing and then leave it in a 500 degree oven upside down for an hour. Feel free to do that one or two times when you first buy it, but don't go through life thinking that all of the serious cooks do this every time they cook over iron. Unless you strip the thing down to bare metal and re-season it from scratch, you will be fine adding a small amount of seasoning every time you cook with and clean your pan. Over time, hundreds of layers will bond on top of each other, getting smoother and shinier with each pass. Step three is to cook with it. Cast iron is made better with use, so if you think too hard about what not to cook in one, you'll lose out on the whole point. You can cook just about anything in cast iron from baked goods to steaks. Definitely take every opportunity to pan fry foods in your cast iron like chicken katsu or tacos dorados. Cooking fatty stuff like bacon and sausages is kind of like seasoning while you cook. Step four is to wash your pan. After it's cool enough to handle, toss out any big chunks of food left behind and run it under hot water. Depending on what you cook, that might be enough. If not, hit your wet sponge with a drop of dish soap and scrub the pan just as you would any other. Sometimes people act as if dish soap will destroy your seasoning, but remember that each layer is bonded to the iron at the molecular level. Wash both sides, towel dry it, and return it to the stove. This is where cast iron maintenance makes a meaningful distinction from that of other pans. You shouldn't just let this drip dry. You never want any water just hanging out on iron, so use the stove to evaporate every last drop. This only takes a minute or two since washing with hot water warmed up the pan to begin with. After all the water has been evaporated, use this hot pan opportunity to pour in a little bit of oil and wipe it evenly across the cooking surface. That's all it takes. If you repeat this cook, then clean, then season process over and over again, in time you will develop the coveted properties of a prize pan, a mirror finish, and a nonstick surface. I realize that by putting another cast iron video out into the world, I'm only further diluting the information marketplace. I just wanted to make clear that everything I just outlined is all you really need to know because I feel bad for all the beginners who are set up for information overload and I don't want that preventing anyone from loving a pan like this till they die. Now, if I may, I'd like to rattle off a couple ways in which you can earn bonus points for cast iron care. You could use a premium fat like beef tallow or flaxseed oil instead of vegetable or peanut oil for seasoning. Some people feel like certain fats help your pan become more nonstick more reliably. You could use a bandana to wipe the seasoning oil onto your pan. The logic here is that a bandana is lint free whereas a cotton rag tends to trap tiny little fibers underneath the seasoning. You could wipe oil all over the inside, outside, and handle every time you clean and dry the pan. This would ensure that the whole thing is evenly seasoned instead of primarily just the cooking surface. Very aesthetic. You could take note of how acidic the ingredients you're using are as well as how long they remain on the surface. For example, a Sunday gravy sitting on the pan for hours might degrade your seasoning with so much acidic tomato standing in it for so long, maybe. 
These are all valid points and you may wish to employ them, but just remember that this is a solid hunk of iron and the worst thing likely to happen to it would be for it to rust, which can be fixed with a whole lot of scrubbing and a new layer of seasoning. Hopefully this is now just one fewer thing to obsess over. There is no shortage of manias ready to fill in. I heard Britney Spears is a prisoner. Did you see that GameStop is back? Is this microphone real or not? Snyder cut, Snyder cut, Snyder cut. Sn Before you go, here is a message from subscription-based skincare brand, Curology. I've seen Andy Baragani's medicine cabinet. I've tried getting into skincare. I know it's important and I wanna be good at it, but even the beginner's information on skincare subreddits is impossible to decode. I've been using Curology for half a year because they do all the work for me. I took some selfies, answered some questions, sent all of that to an expert, and they sent me a cleanser, moisturizer, and this custom formula that I use every night. Now even Brie uses Curology and she's seen wild improvements in her skin compared to when she would use those over-the-counter, hippy-dippy, crunchy granola skincare products that she loves so much made out of clay and beach sand or whatever. No drugstore product is this customized. They will use your photos, your history, and your goals to pick powerful active ingredients just for you. Use my custom link, curala.g slash internet Shaquille2 and sign up for a free trial. You do have to pay $4.95 for shipping. And if you decide to keep the routine going, it's $30 a month after that. They also have different plans for people who prefer to use their own cleansers and moisturizers and just want that custom formula. And I believe this to be the perfect ending to a video all about routine maintenance.